Okay, so next we'll do some beam calculation examples. So I'm gonna get out of here. Uh, first, I'll show you the example. So the first one we'll do is, is real. It'll just be a joist like you probably have in your house or something, just uh, a standard two by joist, a, a board of wood, um, and it's spaced at 16 inches. So that's typically what you have in a house. Uh, in this case, it's fully supported laterally. So we don't have to worry about uh, lateral torsional buckling, which is nice. And it's bearing on the two by four top plate at the end. So that's something that's important to account for when we're looking at uh, a bearing. Um, so it's asking us in this case to find the smallest adequate number one Saturn pine two by section. So what we mean by a two by is you know, two by four, two by eight, two by 10. We want to find a section. So I'm going to go into clear calcs and show you kind of how we do it here. So if I go here, I'll just create a new project. So uh, clear calcs. And we'll add a new calculation. So you can see we've got quite a few different beams or columns or whatever, and we're, we're always adding more. So keep on the lookout for what's going to come up. So I'm going to add a wood beam using ASD. And it's just loading up now. Okay, so you can see here we have our references and our assumptions. Um, so Let's go back here to our example. So total length is 10 feet, it's fully braced. Let's go back and put this in. So total length, we'll put this as 10 feet and we'll set it as fully braced. Next, we're gonna look at our supports. So we have pin supports at zero and 10 feet. You can see we just have a formula here to, to automatically update it. And our bearing length is 3.5 inches, which is what it would be for a, a two by four top plate. So we don't have to change that. Uh, then we go look here. We have to change the tributary width. So we set these uh, joists to at a 16 inch spacing. So I'll just enter 16 divided by 12. So 1.33 feet spacing. Okay, and our dead load and live load were 25 PSF and 50 PSF. So we're good there. Now, in this case, what are we using right now? We're using a five and a half by 16. This is a glue land beam. So we want a two by. So let's go, we have this little member selector here. So we click on that. And so we want our type to be dimension lumber. Species, we said Southern pine. So let's enter that. And our grade was number one. So number one. And since we want a two by, we'll set our max width to two inches. So now we can look at all the sizes and it'll tell us what's governing. So if we look at a two by three, which is really small for a beam or a joist, you can see it's, it's way overused. So we go down, we see a two by eight satisfies everything. Bending governs. And you can see our shear is, is very low, so there's no problem here. So we select it and it'll recalculate everything here. And now we found, so we have our applied bending stress in this case, 1170 PSI and our allowable stress is 1250 PSI. So we're good. We'll do the same with shear, bearing, and it'll also calculate our short-term deflection, which is 0.2 inches, and our long-term long deflection. So that accounts for creep as well, and that's a quarter inch. Uh, so we can go down here and now we see this repeating member. In this case, we didn't apply it yet, but we could apply the repeating member factor. So let's apply it since we have a bunch of joists repeating next to each other. We'll put it on. And now we can see our capacity is down to 82%. In this case, we'll keep it like this, but you can go back and see if now there's a different beam that works better. That's, that's definitely something you can do. Um, so if we look, say, at the elastic modulus, you can see all the factors here. So wet service factor, temperature factor, they're all one. So like I was saying, they usually all end up being one. And if you look here at the adjusted modulus of elasticity, we have our modulus of elasticity times all the uh, factors and they're all one, so it just stays the same. Um, 
if we look at our bending design, same thing, but now you can see we have a 1.15 for our repeating member factor. So we'll, that's good, that, that increases our strength. It was 1,250 and now it's 1,440. Uh, if you look at bearing, we have a table with all our supports. So we can see that all our supports, in this case, they're the same. They're 97.9 PSI, allowable is 565. So we're happy. And we can look at the flexions. Again, similar thing. So we're finding L over 480 and L over 610. So we're, we're plenty within the code limits. So that's basically, we've got a full beam design now. It, it, work perfectly. Um, you can see our shear diagram, our moment diagram, and then if we want, we could go and change the, the different load cases to see what else it is, and you can see your free body diagram. You can see there's self-weight included, so we're calculating that. In wood, it's pretty common for people, especially with small two buys or something, people will often ignore the self-weight and just keep it in their dead load and PSF, so if you want to do that, that's easy, we can just make it no for include self-weight, and then it's, it's gone, which in this case, it doesn't really change anything. So that was our first example. We're gonna to go to the second one, which is gonna be a little more complex. So here, I'll just show you real quick. So in this case, we've got this cantilevered beam supporting a gym floor. It's a fancy gym, I guess. Um, and so it's got a high live load, low dead load, just because in general in wood structures, we can get a much lower dead load than in uh, other structures. Uh, so our beam spacing is at six feet and it's bearing on eight by eight posts. So that an eight by eight, the, I, I forgot to mention this earlier, but um, in general, our saw number dimensions are gonna be a lot smaller than what they actually, the nominal size is. So in this case, it's a seven and a quarter inch. Um, and this time we're designing it, it's an LRFT project. So we're designing it for LRFT provisions. So let's go back to clear calcs and we'll add a new calculation. And we're going to do wood beam this time, LRFD. We're just going to load it up. So this is all cloud-based. So the nice thing is if I make a, a mistake or my computer crashed right now, I can just pull it back up and it'll all be saved. Or I can open it on Brooks' computer here or something and it works fine. Um, so in this case, oh, I'll go back to it. What we're trying to do here is we're trying to find the 24F V8 DF glue lamp section. So 24F V8 refers to the grade and the species. So 24F means 2,400 uh, PSI bending strength. And then the V8 just refers to how the, the different uh, boards of wood are set up. So V8 is actually what we call a balance section. So we have strong uh, wood at the top and the bottom which is what you typically use in a continuous beam, just because you have a negative moment as well. So we'll go back to clear calcs. So our total length is 43 feet. So we'll change this. And this time our lateral torsional buckling bracing was only at the support. So we'll leave it like this. Uh, our deflection limits, we'll leave them like this. And now we have to add our supports. So this one, our we have three supports. So the first one was at 15 feet. So we'll change it. And we'll add another one at 35 feet. So they're here. And our bearing lengths, I said, were seven and a quarter inches. So let's change this here. Whoops. And now we're getting an error because we have to put these all in. Okay. And service condition and temperature range are all dry and there's low temperature, so no problem. So you can see here on our free body diagram, we've got our three supports already. Um, now, our tributary width, we said was six feet. So let's change it to six feet. Our dead load is, was 25 PSF, but our live load was 100. So let's change that. Now we can also add a point load if we wanted to, or we can also add different snow uh, loads. So we could add a snow load, wind load, whatever we want. Uh, so that's, in this case, we don't have any, but that's something we could add a moment load as well. Um, so that can be done. So now we can see we've got our occupancy, floor, self-weight, and note that we're showing the factored loads. So in this case, we're showing the 1.2D plus 1.6L uh, load case. So you can see the factored, we can see the factored reactions as well. Um, so with that done, let's find our glue lamp beam. So what were we looking for here? We were looking for, a 
24 FVA glue lamp section and a width of five and a half inches. So let's go back to clear calcs and we'll click on our member selection. And so our grade we said was 24 FV8, Douglas fir. And our max width was five and a half inches. So we'll put 5.5. Oh, whoops. Oh, my dot key doesn't work for some reason. Okay, well, that, that's fine. We'll just leave it like this and we'll just scroll a bit more. But so we'll scroll down to the five and a half. And now let's see here. So what we find is the 11 and a quarter inches deep beam is the one that works the best. So it satisfies every condition. Now, if we go up again, actually, and we say, look at the two and a half inch wide beams, you can see in this case, they're actually failing and bearing. Even if they're deep enough, they're still failing and bearing. So in this case, they're best governing. So that's obviously inadequate, but that's something to look at um, when you're dealing with this, that just because it's okay in bending and shear, it doesn't mean it's okay in, in bearing because it does govern rather often. So we'll go back to here and which one was it? Uh, oh, whoops, this is five and one eighth. So five and a half by 11 and a quarter. So that's what we're gonna use. So we'll select it. And now you can see it's just updating. So our ultimate bending moment in positive bending was 254 and the negative bending was minus 444. So we're getting all this from our internal FEA engine, same as these uh, plots here. Now, notice in this case, negative bending and positive bending, we basically have the same capacity. So if we go down to uh, bending design, and we'll put it in detailed mode so we can see better what's going on. Uh, we'll go back down here. So you can see our uh, stability factors are based are a little different. So that's why we're getting slightly different strengths in positive and negative bending. So you can see here uh, it's calculating and multiply it. And you can see we're taking the minimum of the volume factor, which in this case is just one, or uh, the, the stability factor. So that's what we want to make sure that we're, we're doing. Now, if for instance, um, we went back here and we used a 24FV4DF, that's an unbalanced combination. So in this case, if we look at, we had five and a half by 14 inches or by 11 and a quarter, you'll see that oh, it doesn't pass the moment check anymore. And so if we stick with the same one, just this is the same beam except slightly different uh, beam grade, you can see negative bending it's actually less strong, right? So it's 368 uh, kip inches instead of 475 like it used to be. So that's where, that's where for a continuous beam where as you can see the peak moment is negative, you're gonna wanna use a, a balanced layout. So that's something to, to keep in mind as well. Um, so I think that concludes this example. Um, basically, you always want to check your factors and those are really easy to deal with. You just have to be very conscious of your conditions. So environmental conditions, size, um, your loading conditions, things like that. So you just want to be very careful about that. Um, and so in a software like ClearCalc, you know, it's usually you just tell it what your conditions are and, and no problem.